All right, we are accepting calls this hour from time travelers only. If you have traveled in time or you are presently a traveler to this time, then we want to hear from you. Otherwise, the phone lines are closed, but for that group, they are certainly open. Uh, with that in mind, uh, top of the morning to you on the wild card line. You are on the air. Hello. Hello. What's going on? It is the Infinite Fringe. We are recording live. Hey, my name is Billy Ray Valentine. Billy the Kid, Mecca G. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, I'm, I'm getting over a, a flu, a cold. I don't know what it is, man. Um, it, it, it didn't feel so good. My nose is still, I'm a bit nasally. If uh, if I'm coming through your ear holes that way, that's, that's what's going on. But I feel good. I feel okay. You know, I, I've been taking my colloidal silver. I've been taking some vitamin D. You know, I've been taking like uh, 5,000 IUs of vitamin D, you know, because there's no sun out right now. Um, I've been taking some vitamin C and, and eating some avocados, man. you know, try, <laughs> try to get it together. But uh, but uh, um, we're going to we're going we're gonna to throw this out immediately. I, I still have some back catalog stuff that I need to give you guys. But my boy is here. And every time my boy is here, we got to get it out immediately because he is the guy and everybody loves to hear from Mr. Mark Devlin. It, I, every time I have Mark Devlin on, it's like, oh, my God, Mark, Mark, Mark. It's it's like he's the mayor of the freaking world. I, I my, my boy, Colin Wysong, uh, what's up, Colin? How you doing? He tells me what you can do for me um, because, uh, I don't know, he just acts randomly. He's like, you can get me some autograph books of, from Mark Devlin. This is what he wants. This is what the people want. Mr. Mark Devlin is here. My close personal friend. I love this guy. He's one of my favorite people in the world. Mr. Mark Devlin returning to the Infinite Fringe. How are you, sir? What is going on? What's up, brother? Good to be back. That's quite an accolade, quite an intro. I appreciate that. You know Always that. good to kick it with you. What's going on? How are things over by you? Well, just keeping busy, you know, a whole lot of stuff going on here. I just... Uh, Make sure I'm busy all the time. That's my strategy. Throw myself into loads and loads of projects. And it stops my mind from wandering to places where I prefer it not to wander. Mm -hmm. And also it puts out, you know, some empowering, important information into the world, mm -hmm. whether yeah. it's in the form of books or podcasts or shows or whatever it may be. But yeah, I'm always doing something, man. That's good. Well, we, we appreciate you always doing something now. Um, you, you talked about being busy. We're going to talk about it from jump. We're, we're going to talk about a bunch of things today, but from jump, Mark is coming to America. He's coming to America. We didn't know if we would ever get Mark, <clears throat> excuse me, if we would ever get Mark Devlin back in America after the whole fiasco with, uh, with the injections and the whole deal. But, but here Sorry, he man. is, he's coming back. Tell him about it, sir. Yeah. So the arm spear requirements were relaxed last year day before my birthday so it felt like a present so i thought well you know nobody knows what's around the corner nobody knows what might be coming back especially in an election year right so i thought i better get my ass back over to america because it might be the only opportunity i get i actually came over in october last year i went to las vegas for flat Oberfest. i got the invitation from karen b to go and be a part of that event so that was great that was just a very quick week weekend trip to las vegas and then in november i managed to get out to australia damn which i never thought i was going to be able to do again with all the nonsense that was happening out there but they relaxed their britney requirements right uh, a while back so i thought well i better get this tour done because i've been trying to do this since march 2020 and i managed to do four speaking events in australia in november in brisbane sydney melbourne and perth really well attended got about 80 people 70 80 people at each gig and it went really well and i really felt like i communicated some empowering information right. so then the idea came into my mind that well maybe i should try and do this in america again while well, this window of opportunity is there before it gets removed again if it does 
And I thought, well, I'll just try the same format in four American cities. So that's the strategy I've been working on. And I'm coming out there in April. I'm hitting four cities on the eastern seaboard. So I'm basically flying into Boston and then doing ground transportation between these different cities. So I don't have to fly all the time. And I'm going to be hitting Boston, Philadelphia, New York and New Haven in that Incredible. order. Yeah. So I like the idea of doing New Haven, Connecticut, because it's the home of Yale, it's the home of Skull and Bones, that secret society, mystery school fraternity, you know. And I just thought, wouldn't it be good to try and overwrite some of that dark energy that must exist in that place with some positivity and some empowering information and messages? So that's the plan, man. And uh, you'll be with yourself in New York, of course. Oh man, I'm gonna go down. I mean, we're we're gonna do it here in New York for sure, you know. But but I'm I'm gonna go down to uh to New Haven. You don't have to give me uh an excuse, right, to go down there. And you're giving me one because you're there, right? And um we we can tour we can tour Yale together, bro. Listen, it's it, it's Disneyland for me. I've been down there several times to go see. It's quite beautiful, to be honest with you. Mm. <clears throat> it's a, it's a very beautiful uh, uh campus and uh, a lot of occult uh uh imagery you know and you can see the tomb at uh, one time i two times actually i saw somebody coming in and out of it uh oh, yeah. they, they've gotten high tech they got they got some something at the door that's uh you have to put in a pin code or something you you, you know so uh it's it's really cool you know um so can't wait to do that with you we should we should like record a video actually and, and uh of us uh in front of the tomb and 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 book and snake and and at the oh, cemetery yeah. the cemetery is gorgeous you know um that would fuel it, all kinds of rumors about us being satanists and dark occultists well we're not you know but, <laughs> i know, you know but it's gonna happen anyway right <laughs> yeah, it, it, it happens as it is you know people say what they're gonna say but it's not the case but anyway regardless the the point of this is mark is coming to america boston philly new haven new york give them the date sir we're gonna put links on the bottom of the show notes, you know, in the show notes, I should say, uh, we're going to put links there and we're going to blast them out on social media. Uh, so you guys have access, but let them know. What sure. are the dates? So, all right. So kicking off in Boston, Wednesday, 3rd of April, this is mm-hmm. an, uh, a venue called the union tavern in Somerville, which is like a district of Boston. That's from around about seven in the evening. Each yeah. of these events will last about three hours. So it's me speaking for about an hour and a quarter. We take a 15 minute refreshment break and then I'm back for part two. And then I do a Q and a with the audience at the end and some book signing. So the whole thing lasts about three hours. So right. the next gig is Saturday, 6th of April, going to be down in Philly at a bar called Misconduct Tavern. Dang. That one's running 6 to 9 p.m. thereabouts. Following day, New York City in Manhattan. And we managed to get a great looking venue called the Town School, which is what? East 76th Street, I believe. Yeah. And Absolutely. that's going to be, yeah, that's an afternoon gig. So that one is running 2 till 5 p.m. So don't get there for the evening or you miss that one. That's strictly <laughs> strictly daytime. Right. And then the last one is Wednesday, the 10th of April up in New Haven. That's at Bar New Haven. That's the name of the venue. It's simply called Bar. And that's like a pizza restaurant slash bar. We've got the back function room there. And that's another one running uh, sort of 7 p.m. in the evening. So those are the four gigs. And the title of the talk is Music's Military and mind control connections. So it's basically me unpacking 15 years worth of research into the true nature of the corporate music industry, what it's really used for, the agendas it's really pushing. And unfortunately, it's nothing to do with fun and entertainment, but it's everything to do with mass mind control and, uh, uh, you know, dark occult symbolism and things of this nature. So I'll be breaking all of that down and compressing it into the three hours And it's important information because I feel it's a piece of the jigsaw puzzle in terms of what's really going on in this world, who's really running things. And my information slots alongside all the other information we get about what's happening in the world of so-called medicine, so-called science, politics, big business, all the rest of it. You know, you slot this piece of the puzzle in place and the big picture becomes so much clearer. I had to mute myself for a second there. Sydney Powell is outside my window causing all types of uh, 
disruption. So if you guys can hear that, that's Sidney Powell screwing with me. Um, but yes, this is going to be fantastic. I think when you're in Philly, it's WrestleMania weekend. So anybody out there, I know there's going to be tons of people um, down there for WrestleMania. You know, I'm, I was supposed to go down there. I clearly won't be able to be down there on the seventh, but uh, uh, which is WrestleMania. But the sixth is, uh, I think it's a Saturday, and I, I think I might be down there anyway. So I might stop and see Mark in, in Philadelphia if I can. Oh, also, um, I always pick the wrong weekends for my events. I didn't know it was WrestleMania. That's a good thing. That means everybody's going to be there, right? That, that's a really good thing. So they can stop as long as they can get away from the wrestling to come to right. the event, you know what I mean? Well, you know, it's it's uh, the, the parallels between professional wrestling and real life. You know, it's uh, and and the government and and the music industry. It's it's insanity. It's insanity, the, the way they all merge together. I always say if you're a wrestling fan, you already got a one-on-one on everything else. You can, you can figure it all out after, after that if, you, if you've mastered professional wrestling. So, um, All right. So you, you talked about mind control, and, uh, and you know that, that's one of my things. It's, there's, there's only, in my, in my estimation, and of course, I could be very wrong, there's only about three real conspiracies in the world, and one of them is mind control. All right, so uh, we're going to be discuss that and, and, and see what develops, right? Um, but also, um, all types of, of craziness going on in hip hop, and, and that is your area of expertise. Not so much anymore about, about the the um, the recent stuff because it's absolute trash, you know. For the most part, you know, there are some rare exceptions, but uh, things have been have been hitting the wall lately. <laughs> In regards to some of these like icons of hip hop, I'm turning it over to you, sir. What's up? Well, it's just crazy. You know, I spent the 90s as a DJ playing hip hop and R&B, very much into the music, very much into the culture. I started coming to New York in 94 and I used to go shopping for vinyl at record shops like, uh, what was it, Vinyl Mania, Fat Beats, Rock and Soul. These were classic record stores back in the day. And I used to go to this club night run by Funkmaster Flex on a Sunday night at the Tunnel. So the Tunnel was this notorious spot in the mid-90s. And it was crazy in there. It was hectic. People got robbed every week. You know, there's all kinds of madness going on in there. But it was the place where all the hip-hop artists used to go, used to, go to hang out. And uh, Flex was playing alongside the, the Flip Squad DJs, Big Cab, and many other guys. And I used to love going down there. And it was pretty dangerous for me. You know, I was a white guy from England and uh, I was the only uh, Caucasian individual in the building and uh, you might look back on it now and think I was mad to go in that place but I had some incredible experiences but it's mad for me now because so many of those big names that were on the 90s rap and hip-hop scene are hitting the headlines now the main one the obvious one is P Diddy aka Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, whatever the hell he's calling himself this week. And love, I'm watching love. I'm watching Diddy's entire world just unravel in front of my eyes in real time. Couldn't happen insane. to a nicer guy, Mark. I know he's a nice fella. Yeah. He's actually being R. Kelly'd. So it's like yeah. R. Kelly part two. It's exactly what happened to that dude. You know, all these revelations came out about stuff that he was getting up to, all kinds of craziness in his private life. Uh, multiple women accusing R. Kelly of basically running a sort of mind control cult or a sex harem kept women, you know. And uh, we're getting similar accusations about Puff Daddy now. And I think this gives us some insights into just what it takes to become that rich, famous powerful and influential because P Diddy has been a, a mogul sitting right at the top of the world of hip hop for about three decades. Now, whenever Forbes do their hip hop rich list, he's up there in the top three. Usually Dr. Dre is in there. Usually uh, Jay-Z is in there as well, but P Diddy is always at the top of that list. And there's a reason for this. You know, we were talking earlier about New Haven, Skull and Bones, the right, right, secret right. society up there. And according to Professor Griff from Public Enemy, you know, he's no fan of P. Diddy. And he's had a thing or two to say about what it took for Puffy to get this level of success. And Professor Griff says that Diddy took part in a sort of initiation ritual, Skull and Bones style, where he was required to lie naked in a coffin while surrounded by his peers looking on 
while he recounted his sexual history. And apparently, this is what goes down at Skull and Bones as part of what it takes to be a part of that fraternity. So if that's the case, hmm, I think I'll give that one a miss. Not really my idea of a party. <laughs> you but sure? Apparently that's what, yeah, apparently that's what Diddy went through. Right. Uh, but it's interesting now because his, his entire world is just falling apart. Yeah, You've got man. all these women coming forward, recu- accusing him of sexual molestation. And dudes. And dudes. Right, right. right. I right. mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Diddy has always appeared as if he swings both ways to me. Right. You right. listen to him on some of those bad boy records and he's going, take that, take that, take that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think there could be some double meanings going on there. <laughs> he was always there in the background of those records going, uh-huh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it really pissed off the rappers of the time, not least notorious B.I.G., you know, Mark Curry, who yeah. was a rapper on the Bad Boy Records label, put yeah. out a book many years ago called Dancing with the Devil, How mm. Puff Burnt the Bad Boys of Hip Hop. Yeah. And he broke down in that book how all the rappers signed to Bad Boy got pissed off with Puffy forcing himself into their videos yeah. so they're trying to make a music video to promote their song and there's this dude dancing around in a shiny suit and he's loaning the use of his bentley for them to uh, feature in the video and then afterwards he charges them a fee yeah. for having appeared in their video and performed on it going uh-huh yeah that's right <laughs> when nobody wanted him there in the first place <laughs> and, and curry details in that book how any rapper or any singer ever signed to bad boy records has come out of it really badly it's never that was my, that's what i was about to say i mean i i don't know and maybe somebody can correct me but i don't know anybody that came out of out of bad boy and and has actually through bad boy made money right we had we had jada kiss who was there with the locks but they separate even though uh bad boy owned their their uh their catalog or everything i think pretty much until a few years ago you know um mace has has had a lot of things to say about about uh his time with Diddy. Uh uh Craig Mack is dead. God bless him and and he died broke. Uh uh, uh what is it? Uh Black Rob also uh, passed away. God bless him and he never had any money, you know. And True. and now rumors are are swirling. I mean, it's it's through the internet age about Biggie and how he wanted to, he wanted out. And he wasn't happy and he was getting ready to leave. I could believe all of these things. I could, you know, um, he, he is a reprehensible human being, did he, you know, for, and, uh, I, I don't think we'll get much, put much pushback on that from anyone. You know, he, he's just not a good dude. Um, and he was always out for self, but, but, uh, they talk about Clive Davis and his role in all of this. And, and people are comparing Clive Davis to Jeffrey Epstein. You know, or 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 the, the the whole um, what is it? Uh, umbrella of this, the the Clive Davis umbrella or the Jeffrey Epstein umbrella, you know, of uh, or Ghislaine Maxwell. I I don't know who to who to relate him to, but he's the godfather of this. Is supposed to be Clive Davis, who allegedly, according to the rumors that are going on out there, had sex with Diddy. Diddy was the one. I mean, he. He asked Diddy to have sex with him in order to give him the. I'd, I'd be like, oh, okay, maybe who cares what what they did? But then Diddy has has had has had Usher living in his house when Usher was a child, a child, fifteen, you know. And and now they have rumors of Usher and Diddy and Meek Mill having a threesome and and forcing some guy to film it. You know, so maybe there, there's footage of not that not that I ever want to see that crap, but maybe there's footage of it somewhere, you know, um, and uh, and Justin Bieber was also a part of this. And when he was a youngster, um, I, I heard he he divorced himself from it. He didn't want anything to do with it. Unfortunately, Usher stuck around, you know, um, it's it's just debauchery. Right. What they're doing, what, what Diddy was doing. He had freak offs, uh, apparently with Cassie. You know, and uh, and tons of other people. And and then you get uh, some of the rappers that come out like 50, 50 Cent. He's one of my favorite rappers in the whole world. He's incredibly underrated, <clears throat> even though he is considered one of the greatest of all time. I still think he's underrated for what he was able to do in the short amount of time that he was able to do it. 
right? But he's come out and he's been talking about Diddy forever, right? He's like, this guy asked me, he asked to take me shopping. Like, I'm not going shopping with this dude. And then Cat Williams comes out and says the same thing. And he said, he told Diddy, I don't let men take me shopping, <laughs> you know? Um, so um, there's, there's a couple of others that, that we can sprinkle in throughout the interview, man. But it's not looking good for the dude. So many people are coming out. He had Cassie as a sex slave. He used to rent her out, allegedly, to other dudes and sat down and watched this stuff. I, I don't know, Mark. I, I have no idea what's going on here, man. And, and, and this is why I am so glad I was never a part of any of that shit. You know, like it, it's just I, 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 I could not, you know, I, I would have never made it if I had any talent. I had never made it because I'd like I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm going that way. Bye. And that's it. But so many of these people value money over everything else. And he's a billionaire. Diddy is a billionaire almost or, or at least almost there. Right. He's either a billionaire or, or 900 millionaire or something. Uh, he's close. And uh, this is how people are saying that he got what he got. Bad one. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here because it appears as if the industry is throwing him under the bus and they're just allowing this stuff to happen. Many will argue that it's all controlled. You know, none of this this stuff happens organically. It's all part of some agenda. Uh, and maybe Diddy is a willing participant in it, but I don't really think so. What mm -hmm. I'm seeing is many parallels to what happened to R. Kelly. And it looks as if it's going to end really badly for Diddy. He may end up in jail. Uh, I don't know if he'll have a great time in jail. You know, it depends on his preferences and how often, that, he likes, yeah, how often he likes to take a shower. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he might have a great time in jail. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> it looks as if he may be going there. And uh, it just casts a really negative light on the entire culture, in my view, because yeah, yeah. you've got all these artists that were so big in the 90s and hip hop was an entirely different beast in the 90s to what it is now, as you said. You know, the stuff that's coming out now is just straight garbage, straight satanic. I don't even consider these so-called artists to be rappers anymore. But yeah. the 90s was the golden era. It yeah. really was. It was the, the high point, the high uh, margin for hip hop. And uh, during that time, you had Funkmaster Flex as the main DJ out of New York. And the main DJ playing all this stuff in the UK, who'd been there for decades, was Tim Westwood. And there have been similar accusations against Tim Westwood. Go figure. So mm -hmm. Westwood was a close personal friend of P. Diddy. Of course. Close personal friend of R. Kelly. Mm. Close personal friend of Africa Bambata. Oh. So accusations about Bambata have been out for, for many years now. Nothing's happened to that dude. Mm -hmm. So he appears to have high level protection. And I've got many questions about how it was that he came to be one of the founding fathers of hip hop culture in New York, right, alongside right, right. Grandmaster Flash and Cool Herc. But several men have accused Bambata of having sexually molested them when they were minors. Right. And this goes back to 2016. And like I say, still, nothing has happened to Bambata. But over here in the UK, we've got many women who have accused Tim Westwood of having sexually assaulted them. Right. They're all black, so they're all young black girls at the time. One of them was as young as 14, one of the accusers. Oh, man. And apparently, there are two separate BBC investigations going on, so that will go well then because Westwood used to work for BBC Radio 1 and a Metropolitan Police investigation going on. But in spite of the fact that these investigations have apparently been happening since 2022, nothing's happened to him. Not only that, but he's still putting on parties in South London, which are being frequented by many, many young black girls. So he's still continuing in the same way as he always has, in spite of these accusations. So it's interesting that some high-profile characters get thrown under the bus, R. Kelly, P. Diddy, and some appear to have such high-level protection that nothing ever happens to them. Westwood, Bambata. Very right. interesting. And I wonder Bambata how it's graded. So hard to, he, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, but Bambata is so hard to, to understand. Hmm. Because right, right while he has the the moniker of one of the godfathers of hip hop, right? One of the, the pillars of hip hop. He, he was never as commercially successful as an R Kelly or as a, or as a P Diddy. He never had, uh, he still doesn't have the money that they, that they put together, you know? So, and uh, 
you would think that that somebody like Diddy or or R. Kelly would have more protection. Bombard is walking around in Europe right now, chilling. Right. Like nothing never happened. And and there's several accusations by young men out here that that say that Bombada, you know, had their way, had his way with them when they were kids, you know, um, hmm. I, and nothing, nothing has come of this. And it, and it hit it hit kind of hard in 2016. I remember hmm. um, and uh, nothing, absolutely nothing. He's 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 doing his thing and he's still doing parties. He's still doing shows and people still he's hmm. still a revered character in the narrative of hip hop, you know, um, R Kelly's in jail, you know, uh, yeah, the, the, the saddest no. thing of all is that so few people just seem to care yeah, about yeah. any of this. And I think it's down to the fact that a lot of people don't care for rap music, hip hop culture. They turn their nose up at that whole stuff. So it doesn't matter to them that a founding father, one of the key figures in this movement has been accused of all this stuff because right. they just don't look at it. But it's amazing how few people seem to care. I mean, just imagine if it was some rock music god that had been accused of the stuff that Bambata has. A whole load of people would care then. But they're just getting away with it because of the fact that people just don't, you know, look at this culture. So right. few people care about this stuff. And they really should care because what we've got here is an entire genre which is tainted because so many of its key figures have been accused of this kind of activity, which should bother anyone, whoever's been accused of doing it. Right. right? But it's caused me to have all kinds of questions about this entire culture and how it actually got started. Well, I, because... I want to ask you about that, right? right. Um, it's been going around a little bit on, on the all types. I mean, Instagram and TikTok are the new YouTube, right? I remember you could find all types of information on YouTube you can't do that anymore. You will get banned immediately, but you can still go to Instagram and TikTok and find whatever you want. So go do that before they shut that down too. And they will, right? Because it's the wild, wild west over there. And so you see these uh, things going around about the origins of hip hop. Before I go there, I, I, want, I want to do one more thing about Diddy because I want, I want your opinions on recent Kanye West. Um, so... Kanye West called Diddy a fed once. I don't know if you remember. He was like, this guy's a fed. He's like, I want nothing to do with Diddy. Diddy's a fed. Stay away from me. You know, and uh, think what you want to think about Kanye West, right? We have a lot of criticisms about Kanye, but damn it, man. He's been right sometimes here. <laughs> you know, It's incredible. And, and now Diddy is, is going through it, right? Another one that I want to talk, I want to talk about Kanye West uh, for the most part. I don't want to talk about Jay-Z, but I do want to point this out. Jay-Z is another one who's been stabbing people in the back left and right, right? He has the same reputation as Diddy, and they hung out together often. Jay-Z knew some of this shit at bare minimum, in my opinion, allegedly. I don't know, and there's no evidence out to it. There is uh, some people talking about how he got with Foxy Brown when she was like 15, 16, or, or 14. I don't understand the fascination with these people wanting to have sex with minors. I don't get it. I, I, I just, I, I am not wired that way. So I don't know. Right. But, but uh, it's, it seems to be a prerequisite for, for these to, to make it to the upper echelons of these, uh, of, of entertainment. It's incredible to me. Anyway, go ahead. Give me your thoughts and then we'll go to Kanye. What's up? Right. Well, this is the sort of stuff that Professor Griff has been talking about for decades. You know, right. people think Griff is crazy, but maybe there's something to the stuff that he's saying. There are initiation rituals required for you to get to the upper echelons of right. these industries. And that's going to include sex with minors. Unfortunately, it's just part right. of the ritual. And there's so much evidence of this. You know, R. Kelly was accused of having sexual relations with Aaliyah, the singer Aaliyah, when she was underage, 14 right. years of age. Jay-Z Right. Yeah. So, you know, Aaliyah's no longer with us. Was she a sacrifice? Well, you know, can't rule anything out. Everything's linked as well, because Aaliyah was engaged to Damon Dash, right. who was Jay-Z's business partner in Rockefeller, get it, records. Mm -hmm. And I saw a story this week that Damon Dash is being forced to sell many of his shares in the Rockefeller empire because he's running short of money. He's close to bankruptcy. So he's got to sell a whole load of his interests. And apparently Cameron and Mace, 
Mace is a former Bad Boy Records rapper under Diddy, yeah. have joined forces to buy these shares from Damon Dash to prevent wow. Jay-Z from getting hold of them because they don't want Jay-Z to have any more of a share in Rockefeller Records. So they're kind of sticking it to Jay-Z. So Dame Dash was engaged to Aaliyah. Aaliyah's best friend reportedly was Kidada Jones, the daughter of Quincy Jones. Mm, yeah. I've heard some crazy stories about Quincy Jones, again, from Professor Griff, about some of these homosexual rituals uh, involving Tupac in right. this case. So Tupac was engaged to Kidada Jones, Quincy's daughter. And according to Professor Griff, Quincy once tried to get Tupac to sodomize him uh, in exchange for him being able to date his daughter. These are just crazy stories. And hip hop and rap has always been thought of as a very macho, very alpha male dominated genre. Very much was in the 90s. You never had any rappers in the 90s who identified as gay. And if they had, it would have been major news. And they would probably have got shot. Not saying that's a great thing. I'm not endorsing that. Right, 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 right. I'm just right. saying that was the zeitgeist. That was the, that was the way it was. Right, 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 right. These days, no problem. You have transgender rappers and uh, rainbow head rappers. And uh, who's that guy that was in a, a, a wedding dress giving fellatio to a machine <sighs> gun in one of his videos? I, I forget the dude's uh, name. I don't know. I know. I, I don't know. Uh, I know Little Nas X uh, got involved in stuff like that. Young Thug was was Young using in a dress dressed as little Bo Peep, you know, right. if that kind of shit had gone down in the nineties, these guys would have been <laughs> shot plain and simple. Right. But oh. these days, you know, social engineering being what it is, culture creation, changing times, no problem, no problem with any of that stuff. But you know, my mindset is still in the nineties cause that's when I came up in all this. And it's fascinating for me now to see people like Diddy uh, having their chickens come home to roost. Cause it's like three decades of shafting people and according to some arranging for the sacrifice of notorious big you know being involved in that murder and cassie accusing him of keeping her as a sex slave like an mk ultra uh slave you know um it's like all this stuff is coming back to bite him on the ass now and Good. he doesn't seem to have too many friends he's getting thrown under the bus and a lot of people are enjoying watching this and I am too, because I don't like seeing people getting treated the way Puffy treated so many of the artists signed to his label. Good. You know, karma. Yeah. No, good for him, karma. man. I mean, I, I have no sympathy for, for Diddy. Zero, you know, zero, zero sympathy for him. Uh, so it's or R. Kelly or Jay-Z or any of these people that engaged in this nonsense with minors. I, I just you, you got what you would you would what you have coming to you. What about right. this story from 1991 about this uh, concert that Diddy held in a sports stadium in, uh, I think it was the Bronx or one of the districts in New York? Did you hear about that? No, tell me about it. He put on this event with Heavy D. The, uh, God bless, uh, rest in peace. Right. Exactly. The now deceased rapper Heavy D, who I used to really like. Uh, but Heavy D and Puffy, who were both involved with Uptown Records, right. which was an imprint run by Andre Harrell. Right. And it was Clive Davis of the Arista Empire that put all of them on the map. So, yeah. you know, Uptown and then Bad Boy were imprints of Arista Records with Clive Davis sitting atop the whole thing. But in December 91, Puffy put on this rap concert in a sports gymnasium with Heavy D and they sold too many tickets for how many the sports hall could hold. Yeah. So there were too many people crammed in there. And there was a crazy stampede and a bunch of people died. Right. So, you know, Diddy and Heavy D had that on their conscience. Heavy D died many, many years ago. But Diddy, you know, has been walking around with that on his CV. And many have questioned whether that could have been some sort of ritual to initiate him into the industry. Because very shortly after that, he started running Uptown Records and unfortunately, as my work has revealed, ritual sacrifices for fame and fortune are a part and parcel of this sick satanic industry. So then a few years later, you had the murder of Notorious B.I.G. And it's pretty clear that Puffy was implicated in that or, you know, involved in that in some way. Right. 
And then after that, Puffy's career just went stratospheric, mainly as a businessman. You know, his empire just really blew up and he became a millionaire and there was just no stopping him. He was signing artists left, right and centre and he had his empire running. So he's got you a lot to run of, of a lady called Jaguar, right? Have you, have uh, you seen yeah, her? Yeah. yeah, I know her. Right. And, and um, I, I had no idea who she was up until very recently. Um, and uh, watching her videos uh, uh, talking about Uptown Records and how Andre Harrell is dead and Heavy D is dead and I'll be sure was in uh, a coma not too long ago. And apparently this is where Diddy met his first wife. Uh, I forget her name. God bless her. But she is also passed away. Um, and uh, and uh, Jaguar Wright has some big accusations for Diddy and she's had him for a long, long time. And Jay-Z as well. And she's she was called crazy by a lot of I mean, it, it went viral on the Internet. Everybody, uh, a lot of people saw the of the interviews that she has done, but uh, they called it crazy, you know, and now it's like, well, <laughs> you know, what what does what does what more does she know? Because a lot of things that she's saying are kind of coming to pass, maybe not exactly on the dot, but damn it, you know, a lot of things. Um, so uh, she's an interesting character. and and. Uh, She's been more or less blackballed by the industry as well. Hmm. I would just say to people that if you happen not to be a fan of these styles of music, don't discount what's going on here. Keep right. a close eye on it. Never mind the music. What we have here is an insight into how the entire industry operates. Right. So you might be somebody that's more into rock music or grunge or maybe dance music, electronic music, you know, whatever it may be, or straight pop music. Whatever genre you care to home in on, you will find these same dynamics. You're going to find occult symbolism. You're going to find ritualistic activity. You're going to find Satanism. Unfortunately, you're going to find unsavory stuff like sex with minors and all of this, because yeah. that's what's required for any of these artists to become rich and powerful and successful. Right. I was looking at some Erica Badu CDs yesterday. So Erica Badu was another big artist in the 90s. She was into like neo soul, sort of yeah. organic soul. And her stuff was very metaphysical and mystical and, and, you know, great music. But looking at some CD covers of hers, she's pictured with monarch butterfly wings. Yeah. And this is symbolic of monarch mind control, which is part of MK Ultra, and it's trauma based and it's linked to satanic ritual abuse is what so many of these artists go through in order to become successful. It's just a prerequisite. And people will be surprised at that because Erica Badu talks about spiritual, metaphysical stuff in her lyrics, but even she is not immune, seemingly, from all this crazy stuff that goes on. You simply cannot be a successful artist in any field if you don't go through this stuff. So what we're seeing right now in hip hop with P. Diddy's world coming crashing down on him is nothing distinctive to that genre. It's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, right. you'll find it outside of music. You'll find it in the Hollywood film industry. You'll find it in television. It's you'll everywhere. You'll find it in professional sports. It'll be right there in it's professional so wrestling. Same right. dynamics. You saw Vince McMahon. Jesus Christ. I, I mean, and, and uh, good riddance to bad rubbish, but what the hell he was doing over there, along with uh, with Brock Lesnar and, and uh, a couple of other people. And these are just the people that we know about the the sexual allegations that have gone down him you know Vince McMahon had to step down because he had a sex slave you know pretty much sex trafficking is what he's being accused of uh which is which is I believe it see you I don't have to go very far to believe these things about these people right is it true or not I don't know but do I believe it hell yeah I fucking believe it you know because this is what these people are up to that's what they I mean, it's it's just how many times do we have to see it before we we start to give it some credence here? And a lot of people are giving it some credence nowadays uh, anyway. Also, uh, Capone, Noriega, Noriega, uh, you know, he he is on uh, Drink Champs. He has the podcast that's very successful. And he's gone around talking about that. There is a, there is a level that you get to. And this is what fuels the conspiracy theory, right? If you think that, that that there's nothing to it, then somebody who was in it comes out and says, well, there's a level. And uh, 
They tell you, hey, come through this door or go through that door. I didn't go through that door. I don't know what it is, but if I would have went there, I probably would have sold more records. I didn't sell any records anymore, and now I'm doing this. You know, and this is what he says. He's a, he's a, like, what does that mean, right? What I don't know. There's a lot of ways we can interpret that, but but it always leads back to some um, pedophilia type thing or or a homosexual type thing. And 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 don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being a homosexual. You want to be a homosexual? Do what you want to do. You know, I mean, it, it, that's live your life. That's, you know, um, I have no issue with it. But but pedophilia, like, uh, slow down. But also, you can't force people to do things in order to to make it to another level, right? It's 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 almost like putting a gun to. He'd be like, you want to do this? Here's what you have to do. You know, it's not based on on merit. It's not based on skill. It's not based on what you can do uh, talent wise. It's based on what you're willing to do uh, sexually. Uh, and and Noriega has said this, and and tons of other people have come out and said this in hip hop. Prominent people in hip hop. Go ahead, sir. You're muted, sir. There you go. Yeah, sorry. No, That's good. right. And uh, it's a reminder of how the likes of us, regular everyday dudes, are actually better off with what we've got in life. You oh, know, yeah. We might not have the cars and the yachts and the mansions and the the women and the drugs, if that's what you're into and all the other crazy stuff. But at least we've got our souls. Right. Because you look at people like Jay-Z and Puffy and Dame Dash and Dr. Dre. And it's pretty clear that these dudes have crossed a line and they're never, ever going to be able to go back. Right. So actually, many of these people would probably trade places with the likes of us in a heartbeat if they could. Yeah. And I'm sure they didn't know fully what they were getting into at the start of their careers. You know, think of somebody like Dr. Dre. He was clearly made an offer to become a high profile producer and to push agendas within hip hop and to bring through other artists like 50 cent and Eminem. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure the terms and conditions of the deal would not have been made fully uh, apparent to him at the time he signed on that dotted line and the regrets that people like that must now have and the desire to just go back to an ordinary life, which they can't now do. They've crossed the line you know, it must bother them night and day. So if there's any wannabe fledgling rappers out there who are bemoaning the fact that they never made it big or maybe producers or singers or whatever you, whatever you may be, you're actually far better off where you are than where you could be if you had right. made it, quote, unquote. You know, it turns out we're just better off with these regular everyday lives because at least we've got a soul and a mind to call our own. And we have freedom in a way that these individuals do not. Right, man, it's true um, in, in a lot of ways, right? Uh, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it, you know? Um, and uh, uh, I, I understand the appeal of of wanting that, especially I'm a music lover. I love music, you know? So uh, I, I go to shows all the time, you know? Um, the other day... Uh, a, a Diddy song came on and I was never a huge Diddy fan, but I kind of liked that track that, uh, we can't be stopped now because it's bad boy for life. We ain't, you know, go in nowhere. Right. It came on. Can't stop because we can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> so it came on the other day and I felt some type of way listening to it. I'm like, ah, here's this piece of shit, you know, and I had to fast forward the freaking the freaking song and it so it ruins things for people and, and you're right like um it's such That's a pivotal right. point of of what mm -hmm. hip-hop was right and and some things yeah. have changed for the better in my opinion right because it was very very uh anti-gay you know anti every all of these things you couldn't be gay and be respected right which is very different from from rock and roll right we have freddie mercury elton john you know the david bowie who are, who are icons right right and it's fun Celebrated. right and, and everybody loves them for the most part and nobody cares that they were gay or not they just the music is fantastic it wasn't that way in hip-hop 
you know. But you um, think about uh, it, you know, in, in, in the 90s, when it was taboo to be gay within the hip hop world, you mm -hmm. had the likes of Diddy running around, you know, getting up to all this stuff, no doubt. Yeah. Because that's just that that's what he's into clearly but he couldn't openly admit it so you would see diddy dating women you know he dated jennifer lopez for a while and they call them beards don't they when homosexual yeah. males have uh, women on their arms to make it look like they're heterosexual so yeah. diddy had all these women around him but you know behind the scenes he was probably into other stuff but back in the 90s it was not acceptable to reveal that here we are yeah. in the 2020s, no problem. But I'm just talking about how the culture of the times has yeah. shifted so much. And it won't Absolutely. just be Diddy. You know, there, there's rumors oh, no. about all kinds of people that are you well, know, like Usher. in hip-hop in the 90s. Yeah, I mean, Usher's not a hip-hop artist, but but uh, everybody's uh, talking about his potential involvement in all of this because he, he's intimately linked to Diddy. Right. You know, um, and yeah, of course, there's more. There, there, there is more. I'm waiting for the Jay-Z brick to fall. That's that's the one I I I take special uh, uh interest in and sit there and watch it collapse because that guy is something else. So I I'd, I'd, I'd love popcorn for that one for real, right? If if you're ever gonna sit down and and grab the popcorn and watch, that's the time to do it, right? I let's see what's going on with him. Uh, and Fifty Cent is alleged. I don't know if he's clowning or not. You know, he he might be because he's hilarious. If you're not following him on on Instagram, please do. He makes fun of Diddy relentlessly. And he says he's going to put a, a documentary out called uh, Surviving Diddy, just like Surviving <laughs> R. Kelly. So if this is true, I, I'd love to see it, you know. Um, but uh, sure. we're, we're going to call this episode Surviving Diddy. We're, we're going to one up uh, uh, 50 Cent and do that. 50 is one of the best. I, I mean, you know, his attitudes on some things are is whatever, you know, it's, it's questionable. But but uh, I, I, lo I love what he did. And it's gangster rap, of course. He was the last gangster rapper the last real gangster rapper in my opinion you know now it's it's what it is but the, the, that was the last hard album i ever heard was uh get rich or die trying what what a freaking classic um and and we'll leave with this but th there's the rumor going around i don't know something you've talked about this before on the fringe but uh on instagram on on tiktok on the social something broke out about how it's been confirmed that hip-hop was was radicalized and and, uh, and made gangster by the CIA and all this other stuff. What do you have to say about stuff like that? Yeah, so there's this story about a meeting which took place at a private residence in yeah. Los Angeles in 1991. And all the top executives from the major labels of the time that were putting out hip-hop material were instructed to attend this meeting. Right. And they wheeled in a couple of representatives of the private prison industry, prison for profit. And these guys spoke to the record company executives about how they wanted them to change the lyrical content that was going into rap records so that impressionable young males listening to this stuff would try and emulate their rap idols by adopting criminal lifestyles themselves. This would ensure that there would be a non-stop flow of inmates into this private prison industry, thus bringing huge profits for both the prison executives and also the record labels concerned. There was one individual who was in attendance at this meeting who was so disgusted and outraged by what he heard, allegedly, that he stormed out. And he was warned by the security not to reveal what he'd heard in that meeting. And he supposedly sat on it for 20 odd years and his conscience was biting away at him. And eventually he thought, I've got to go public with what I saw. I've got to reveal this. So he wrote an open letter to the hip hop press at the time. I think it was about 2010. We're going back to those sort of times. And that's when this story broke. And for years, I wondered who the executive was who allowed his home to be used for this meeting. And just recently, somebody confirmed to me that it was the aforementioned Clive Davis. Of course. Of course. So that was the birthing of the gangster rap genre, uh, basically. Uh, that's when it became big time. Very soon after that, you had the appearance of Snoop Dogg and all this stuff coming out of Death Row Records under Suge Knight. And it's not hard to trace it all back and to see that it was an agenda.
And quite clearly, the record companies wanted this kind of lyrical content going into these records because it was fulfilling agendas and it was changing cultural attitudes, changing society. And, uh, you know, the rest is not hard to trace. Right, right, right. Yeah. Cl Clive Davis is the Robert Maxwell, they say, of uh, of this whole deal, right? I think that's what we can equate him to, man. Uh, it always comes back to Clive Davis. He's still alive, 91 years old, kicking. You know, we, we, we can... Not we can his kick. real name. No, is, it, is it not? No. Wow, He's, what's uh, real name? Well, uh, I don't know what his real name is, but he belongs to uh, a particular group, shall we say, a particular mm -hmm. ethnic group. And Clive Davis is not a name that you generally associate with that particular group. All right, all right. Like it's something, something to look into a little bit there. Um, but um, but we, we can keep going all day, right, down this road, and we have very limited time, so we're going to end it right here. I, I know there's way more, right? <laughs> there's way more to go to. There's when, way more. Yeah, this is just a, a potted yeah. one. This is a brief one. We, we, maybe, maybe we'll we'll talk to Mark <clears throat> if he has some time, and we'll do a live fringe when he's in New York City. I can't wait to see well, you, brother. Sure. Been, on location, yeah, for sure. It's been it's been some time since I've since I've seen Mr. Devlin in the flesh. So we're, we're gonna have fun in New York City and in New Haven and in Philadelphia, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure. If you can do it, uh, go out and uh, and uh, come support the dude. He's coming out here, you know, on his own dime to uh, to talk to all of you, man. So uh, if if you, I know I know uh, times are hard in the boulevard, but if you if you can if you can, uh, the tickets are fairly affordable, and uh, and if, if you if you could swing it, come come check it out, uh, Mark Devlin. It's not every time he's going to be here in the United States. So, Mark, tell them about that. Tell them where they can find you. Tell them where they can buy tickets, and then we'll get a body. Sure. So the gigs are 3rd of April, which is a Wednesday in Boston, then Saturday, 6th of April in Philadelphia, Sunday, the 7th in the afternoon in New York, Manhattan, Town School, and then Wednesday, 10th of April in New Haven. So there's Eventbrite pages for each of these events. You can book your tickets there. Uh, as Billy just said, I like to think they are affordable. They're about the cost of a decent restaurant meal, you know, and a restaurant meal is forgotten and has gone through your system in a few hours, whereas this information can stay with you for the rest of your life. Uh, so I would argue that it's three hours very well spent. Also, I've got a crowdfunder running. You know, I hate doing these, but unfortunately, there are costs involved with international flights and putting events on of this nature and you know just general operating costs so if anyone is able to assist with that by way of a donation anything you can contribute would be gratefully appreciated to the crowdfunder so i guess you'll put all the links in the notes below below the show but uh looking forward to Hello. seeing you again in new york yeah, and anyone that can get out to any of these four cities be great to see you be a part of these events it is going to be fun. It is going to be fun to say the least. It's the infinite fringe You're right here on Apple podcast. Thank you everybody for tuning in as, as often as you do for waiting on me. Uh, and uh, I'm here. I'm here now. Um, I've returned to you now. Uh, like Gandalf said in Lord of the Rings. I'm Gandalf the white Gandalf. That's what they used to call me. Okay. I, I mean, I'm a Lord of the Rings geek. What, what do you want me to tell you? All right. Um, the Infinite Fringe on Apple Podcasts and on Podbeam. America Unplugged every Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern on Rockfin and AmericaUnplugged.com. AmericaUnpluggedRadio.com. Actually, Mark, you should come join us on America Unplugged one day when you can. It's on a Saturday. Sit down and talk. Um, sure. Tony Arterburn and Don Jeffries. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Freeworld.fm. You know, uh, go over there and check that out. You know, and, and everything else we got going on. Listen. Be good. I still got more to drop. Don't burn the place down while I am gone. Take it easy now. All right? Bye-bye.